from Jurassic Park and Jumanji to Kong Skull Island and Journey to the Center of the Earth. It's safe to say that humans have long imagined what it might be like to visit the prehistoric eras of this planet's history. Perhaps it comes from knowing that the Earth was once so dramatically different back before we evolved into the dominant species on the planet. Then again, maybe the fantasy of traveling back to a land that time forgot is simply in the appeal of how cool it would be to see an actual dinosaur up close. Regardless of the reasoning, without access to a time machine, you would find it difficult to make your way back to any era of the primeval world. Unless, of course, you happen to accidentally stumble upon SCP-1265, also known as the Mesozoic Preserve. This anomalous location is an irregular landmass found within the basin of the Congo River in Central Africa. The oddly shaped portion of land, measuring 50 kilometers cubed, is mostly contained within the Democratic Republic of the Congo. However, around 15 of those cubed kilometers spill over into what is known as just the Republic of the Congo, the neighboring smaller country of the two that the Congo is split into. SCP-1265 appears, at first, to be a very unremarkable area, populated only by a sparse number of tribal villages. The place is mostly uninhabited, and in fact there is very little unusual about the local flora and fauna that marks it as being any different from the surrounding Congo Basin. That is, unless you count the dinosaurs, of course. SCP-1265 is, as its alternate name might suggest, home to a number of remarkable species that are thought to have been extinct for many hundreds of millions of years. While they cannot be seen all roaming around the area like the famous moment from the first Jurassic Park movie, once every 30 days these creatures will appear in a group of approximately five, collectively designated as SCP-1265-A. These dinosaurs are not necessarily those known to have their fossils found within Africa itself, but appear to be mostly heralding from the Mesozoic era, and only those that have evolved in similar climates to those found in the Congo Basin. Now, while you might expect some of the big names to come rampaging through the jungle, we're afraid that we might have to burst your bubble. You will not find the likes of the famous Tyrannosaurus Rex or the Brachiosaurus in SCP-1265. As a matter of fact, it's actually highly rare to find any species there that have been previously uncovered in North America according to the fossil records. The most relatively common American dinosaur species to appear as instances of SCP-1265-A are the Spinosaurus and Kentrosaurus, so you're in luck if your favorite Jurassic Park movie was Jurassic Park 3. SCP-1265-A dinos aren't all from the same period of the Mesozoic either, but the most common prehistoric eras represented in the preserve are the Cretaceous and Jurassic. There have even been a few Triassic-era dinosaurs spotted there, as well as several non-dinosaur reptiles. Petrosaurus and similar creatures are known to exist within SCP-1265, but are not commonly seen. There are, perhaps highly surprisingly, a number of dinosaurs that appear as instances of SCP-1265-A that do not match any known to be discovered on the fossil record. These new creatures are known under the collective designation of SCP-1265-A, instead of the uppercase A. The SCP-1265-A creatures are known to be unusually aggressive, especially when compared to their other counterparts that have been encountered within the preserve. Most of the time, even carnivorous species that appear in SCP-1265 are normally pretty docile and show no notable fear or aggression towards humans unless they are provoked. SCP-1265-A, however, tends to be the biggest exception to that rule. These unknown, unrecorded dinosaurs will often charge directly at any Foundation researchers on site when they arrive, and will even indiscriminately attack and viciously slaughter other animals around the preserve. For a time, the SCP Foundation was unable to determine the exact origins of these previously uncategorized dinosaur species that make up SCP-1265-A. That is, until some were found within the fossil record. These creatures that became identified and recorded through the discovery of similar or matching fossils soon ceased behaving with active hostility towards humans in SCP-1265. Any and all instances of SCP-1265-A are incapable of leaving the surrounding area that forms the Mesozoic Preserve, 
Every time that one of the dinosaurs attempts to cross the border that surrounds SCP-1265, the creature will vanish from sight, completely dematerializing in the blink of an eye. The SCP-1265-A instance will reappear shortly after, within three kilometers from the border. On discovery, the dinosaurs appear heavily sedated, but still alive. The existence of SCP-1265 dates back so far that it even crops up in local folklore. According to historical records and various reports of numerous dinosaur sightings over the years, the Mesozoic Preserve is believed to have existed for almost 200 years. The SCP Foundation conducted interviews with members of local tribes, most notably a resident belonging to a nearby Mabashi village, who shed more light on the role some of the dinosaurs have had on their tribe's livelihood. One tribesperson noted that, while many of the creatures didn't eat people, there were occasional exceptions. One instance of SCP-1265-A that did appear carnivorous was known as Neguma Monone, and was described as resembling a large snake that walked on all fours like a dog, with a big ridge over its back. This is most likely referring to either a specific Spinosaurus or the species as a whole. Then, there was a dinosaur that the local people called Mokele Mimebe, the largest of all the SCP-1265-A instances. This was apparently an aquatic or semi-aquatic dinosaur, capable of breathing underwater and large enough to cause tremors in the ground whenever it walked. Mokele was most likely a word for the Kamasaurus species. There was also Mibele Mibele Mibele, sometimes called the beast with planks in its back by the locals, referring to the Kentosaurus in SCP-1265. According to further testimony from the local tribespeople, the Mibelu and Mokele both possess features not present in most modern illustrations that depict such dinosaurs. Namely, almost all of them possessed feathers. They are almost like birds in that way, the tribesperson explained, but they do not fly. The ones that do fly have no feathers. Well, that might not sound as though it's in keeping with the scaly reptilian nature of most depictions of dinosaurs, there's actually some sense to this. You see, dinosaurs are mostly theropods, a subcategory of creatures that evolved into certain animals still alive today, but we call them birds nowadays. In the 1990s, at the Yishan Formation in Liaoning, China, Paleontologists uncovered the first fossil evidence of feathered dinosaurs, with the bones of a Sinosauroptix being the earliest fossils to bear imprinting that suggested dinosaurs had feathers. The same local tribesperson also believed the area of the Congo Basin containing SCP-1265 was hexed, given how none of the dinosaurs could leave without vanishing spontaneously. The same happened whenever one tried to take their meat or their eggs from the preserve. Apparently a number of years before, a gang of hunters had managed to kill a Camarsaurus and attempted to take the creature's carcass from the area. The hunters were forced to enlist the help of local villagers, and it took the combined strength of all of them to move it to the very edge of the preserve. Of course, you can guess what happened next. The creature disappeared, leaving the hunters unable to claim their prize. Over the years, the locals have witnessed countless others try to visit SCP-1265, but not to hunt, just to catch a glimpse of a wandering dinosaur, despite how dangerous that endeavor was. The Foundation conducts monthly expeditions through SCP-1265, studying any changes to the wildlife and often harvesting any dinosaur eggs they come across. After incubating them for a time, the Foundation's researchers will study the newborn dinosaurs until they reach maturity, at which point they are released back into the wild within the Mesozoic Preserve. Naturally, this all occurs on location at Site-1265, which is maintained as a wildlife preserve under the false organization name the Safe and Clean Planet Initiative. During one of these monthly expeditions, one Dr. Neil, a Foundation researcher, made a series of notes regarding the prehistoric wildlife contained within the preserve. According to Neil, there are a number of trilobites that dwell in the water. These are ancient arthropods, armored precursors to modern insects and shellfish. Basically picture a big underwater woodlouse. Apparently the locals would fish for trilobites within SCP-1265, and they taste like prawns when cooked and eaten. While exploring SCP-1265, Dr. Neil discovered a family of Baryonyx, 
a large dinosaur with a long jaw similar to that of a crocodile that mostly fed on fish. Neil observed as these baryonyx approached a clan of Spinosaurus that, according to him, looked more like ducks than anything else thanks to their coating of feathers. The researcher mourned a profound disappointment that he and another doctor, Dr. Moore, had felt in seeing the Spinosaurus up close. Their skeletal structure is completely unsuited for walking upright, and the less said about the so-called spine, the better. Scientifically fascinating, but as a lifelong dinosaur enthusiast, I must grieve for such a titan. Later in the expedition, Dr. Neil discovered the first of a completely new species of dinosaur, a new SCP-1265 lowercase a instance. The creature was iridescent black, similar in color to a raven, and possessed four wings, one on each arm and one on each leg. There was speculation among the expedition team that this was a brand new, never before seen species of Microraptor, possibly native to a continent of Asia during a prehistoric time period. Being an SCP-1265 lowercase a instance, the creature was noticeably aggressive, but the team was able to capture and sedate it, temporarily naming it Microraptor Foundationi. Next, Neil and the rest of the team witnessed a Postosuchus, a species of crocodile from the late Triassic era, drinking at the edge of a lake. The prehistoric croc was suddenly attacked by a pack of Silophysis, which were small carnivores that used their size and speed to take down large prey as a group. They ate the Postosuchus, stripping it right down to the bone like a school of piranha ripping apart a cow in the Amazon. The intrepid expedition party then witnessed a fight between a Therizinosaurus and a Carnotaurus, wherein the victorious Therinozinosaurus dipped its claws in the blood of its fallen enemy and used it to mark its territory, scoring trees with Carnotaurus blood. Finally, the group discovered yet another new SCP-1265 lowercase a instance, this time a Ceratopsidae. These were a subgroup of dinosaurs that were mainly four-legged herbivores, including the likes of the famous Triceratops. This new Ceratopsidae, much like many others in the fossil record, possessed four short, stumpy legs, but only one singular horn for defense. When the Foundation expedition encountered it, it had been engaged in combat with a Pachyrhinosaurus, a horned Ceratopsidae highly similar to the Triceratops, but usually with a row of horns, or horns protruding from its frill, as opposed to the Triceratops's trio of horns. Unlike other members of the Ceratopsidae family, this new SCP-1265 lowercase a instance did not have the characteristic frill, instead appeared to have a pair of floppy ears at the top of its head. The newly discovered dinosaur was also, like the other SCP-1265 lowercase a instances, a lot more aggressive, and gored the Pachyrhinosaurus with its horn. At this current moment in time, it is unknown exactly how the dinosaurs in the Congo Basin actually came to be in SCP-1265. The fact that they cannot leave its borders suggests that they were placed there with the intention of being confined to that area. But there is no way of knowing if these dinosaurs were lifted out of their rightful place in time to the modern day. It could be that they survived for millions of years without evolving, or have perhaps traveled to our time from their prehistoric eras through some form of temporal gateway, a door through time. Unless, of course, someone spared no expense and grew these dinosaurs from scratch, but who'd be mad enough to try that, right?